It was a rainy afternoon at Harvard University, but inside the grand lecture hall, the atmosphere was electric. Rows of professors, scholars, and top students filled the seats, all buzzing about the same thing, a math problem written on the board. It was complex, monstrous, and had stumped the brightest minds in academia for over a decade. At the front stood Dr. Leonard Hayes, Harvard's most respected mathematics professor. He adjusted his glasses and looked at the audience. This equation, he began, pointing at the dense web of numbers and symbols behind him, has remained unsolved by the best minds in the world. Today, we invite anyone, anyone at all, to attempt a solution. A few chuckles spread through the room. No one moved, no one dared, until a small voice piped up from the back. I'd like to try. Heads turned. A little girl, no more than nine years old, stood beside her father, who wore a janitor's uniform and held a mop in one hand. The man looked both proud and nervous. The room grew tense, people whispered. Was this a prank? Dr. Hayes blinked in surprise but nodded politely. Come forward, young lady. The girl stepped forward confidently. Her name was Emily Carter. She wore a faded hoodie and sneakers, clearly not a student, but she had something no one else in that room did. A gift. She walked up to the board and studied the equation. Silence fell over the room, the kind that made people hold their breath. She didn't hesitate long. After barely thirty seconds, she picked up a piece of chalk and began writing. At first, people smirked. Then they leaned in. Each line she wrote was precise, logical, elegant. Her steps built perfectly on each other. She didn't erase anything, didn't stumble. In under two minutes, she stepped back from the board and simply said, I think that's it. Dr. Hayes slowly approached. His face changed from curiosity to disbelief to shock. He turned to the audience. This, this is correct. Gasps broke out. Professors jumped to their feet checking the board. They murmured and argued only to agree again and again. It was true. Emily had solved the problem, the problem they couldn't solve. The same people who had laughed or looked confused now stared at her in stunned silence. The janitor, her father, stood frozen, overcome with emotion. One professor in the front row finally stood and clapped. Slowly others followed. The room erupted, not with confusion or mockery, but with awe and applause. Emily looked at her father, smiling shyly. She didn't care about the attention. For her, it was just another fun puzzle. But to the rest of Harvard, she had just made history. In the hours that followed Emily's astonishing feat, the Harvard campus was a buzz. News of the little girl who solved the unsolvable equation spread like wildfire. Students gathered in groups, professors were still rechecking the steps she had written, and the lecture hall hadn't been that full in years. Dr. Leonard Hayes, usually calm and composed, was pacing across his office floor. He was on the phone with the university dean. I'm telling you, this child is a phenomenon. We need to understand where she learned this. She didn't just memorize a trick. She understood the math. Meanwhile, Emily and her father, James Carter, sat on a bench outside the hall. James still wore his janitor's uniform, a bit stained and damp from work. He looked down at his daughter, stunned by what had happened. How, how did you know how to solve that? He finally asked. Emily shrugged. I saw a pattern, Daddy. It was just like the puzzles you used to draw for me. James blinked, remembering how he'd taught her to play with shapes and numbers using sidewalk chalk when she was only four. He had no idea it would lead to this. A car pulled up in front of them. Out stepped Dean Bradford, along with Dr. Hayes and two other professors. Mr. Carter, the dean began, we'd like to speak to you and Emily in private if that's all right. They were taken to the administration building, into a polished office with leather chairs and shelves lined with academic awards. The dean leaned forward. Emily, we've never seen anything like you. What you did today wasn't just smart, it was revolutionary. With your father's permission, we'd like to offer you a full scholarship to Harvard. James choked up. But she's nine... The professors laughed kindly. True genius doesn't wait for age. 
Emily looked around, overwhelmed but calm. Will I still get to be with my dad? You'll both be provided housing. He'll still have work here if he chooses. But now, you will be the one changing lives. Word of Emily's genius soon reached the media. Articles were written, interviews were requested, but James shielded her from the spotlight. He wanted her to enjoy being a kid, even if she was already a legend. In the months that followed, Emily attended advanced math seminars, often sitting beside doctoral students. She was humble, quiet, but when she spoke, everyone listened. Her story inspired millions. She proved that brilliance can come from anywhere, even from the daughter of a janitor who once cleaned the very floors she now walked as Harvard's youngest ever scholar. And every evening, no matter how busy, she and her dad would still sit down together, sharing dinner, laughing over puzzles, and remembering the moment that changed their lives forever. Not because she solved a problem, but because the world finally saw the brilliance they had always shared in their little home.